Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse. This is your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. My name is Chris Coney and I'm the host of the Cryptoverse and the founder of Cryptoversity.com, which is the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. You can find out more at Cryptoversity.com. Now, if you go to the podcast page on Cryptoversity, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or Steam It. And to support the Cryptoverse, and if you want to see it continue, please click through to Steam It and vote for this episode on the Steam Network. Alternatively, you can send us a Bitcoin tip to the address on screen now, or at the bottom of the page if you are listening to this episode. So let's get into it, shall we, for this weekend episode of the Cryptoverse. Today is Saturday the 27th of August, 2016. And as always, we start the day with coinmarketcap.com, looking at the price movements in the cryptocurrency markets. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned for a few days, uh, probably weeks rather, is my favorite number, which is the overall market cap of all cryptocurrencies. Right now, it is 11 billion 341 million. The reason I like this number is because I want to see how much value has been transferred to the um, to the crypto economy as a whole. Now, it's not a super scientific number because it doesn't account for all the economic activity inside the crypto world. So people who are, say, earning um, in Bitcoin than spending in Bitcoin. So this is um, this is adding up all the market caps of all the coins. So it's based on how many people are sort of buying and selling the tokens, right? I mean, eventually this would be pointless um, if if all of the economy moved over to crypto, which we're a long way from. But I use it to compare sort of global GDP with you know the market cap of all cryptocurrencies to see how much value is knocking around inside of crypto world. Excuse me. So I'm looking at the graph here historically. And uh, what was the biggest it sort of hit a, a big old peak? What's that? December the 4th of 2014, when the cryptos, Cryptoverse, let's call it the Cryptoverse, was worth 15.7 billion, which is a couple of billion, actually 4.6 4. billion more than today. So um, I think that was probably because of the value of a Bitcoin back then. That was the big peak. However, we've been in an uptrend since, well, when we start moving up August of last year. So over the last year, we've had a significant increase in the market cap. Say August of last year, the uh, <clears throat> the Cryptoverse was only worth $4 billion. Now that is brilliant. Uh, that is actually a big surprise to me. I hadn't seen that kind of a contrast. Um, I was thinking of a short-term time horizon where we've been sat between sort of 10 and you know, 14 a billion market cap over the last few weeks and months, but I didn't get that contrast. Just a year ago, we were at four billion, and now we're at nearly twelve billion or eleven billion. So that's pretty good for a single year. And if we can carry do, carry on doing that year on year, I'll be pretty pretty pleased with that. So digging into the currencies themselves, then let's see what we've got. Uh, I'll talk about Bitcoin and Mo. Let's do a quick check in between uh, the two Ethereum's. I did see an article that was claiming that Ethereum Classic, the price had dropped significantly because traders were losing interest. I didn't read the full article, but I can tell just from this price information here, that doesn't seem to be that true. So Ethereum Core is still worth way more. It's still nearly a billion dollar blockchain. $11.21 per Ethereum Core token. It's lost just 1.14% in the last 24 hours as opposed to Ethereum Classic, which has gained 6.22% in the last 24 hours. And I'm talking of trader interest, uh, Ethereum Core, $4 million worth of Ethereum Core has been traded in the last 24 hours. $5.4 million worth of Ethereum Classic has been traded in the last 24 hours. So that seems to be the complete opposite of what that headline was claiming. It seems that traders are more interested in trading Ethereum Classic, at least in the last day, than they are in trading Ethereum Core. And after that 5 million, 5.4 million dollars worth of trading of Ethereum Classic, it's left Ethereum Classic up 6.22% on price. So, yeah, you know, you never know. The news is 
um, it has a short shelf life in uh, in crypto world, it has a short life in the mainstream world, but even more so in the crypto world. Steam has dropped down to the sixth most capitalized coin. I think it's been replaced by Ethereum Classic purely because Steam has lost another 5% of its value, making a Steam token worth one, oh sorry, $0.91. So it's 92 cents pretty much, a, a Steam token, making the Steam blockchain worth $115 billion. That's still not discouraging me. I'm definitely going to be buying some more Steam while it's on sale. And I'm glad I, I didn't get around to it yesterday, but I'm glad of that because it's now gone down a few more cents per token. So that's good news. What else we got? Dash and Monero um, down 2% and 2.5% respectively. What else we got here? Um, let's see. Anything else significant? Uh, there's some decent gains and losses. The Digix DAO, which is the gold-backed crypto token, that's got 5.26% up on the day. And then, by contrast, Factum has lost 6.62%. And then, other than that, everyone else is pretty stable. Oh, Monero. M M Monero. See, that's that's if Scenario and Monero um, forked together, <laughs> it would be called Monero. So that would be funny, wouldn't it? So that's not what I meant. I meant Scenario, the up-and-coming uh, social network, which is going to be more Facebook-like than Steam, that is sitting at the moment at 16 cents per token, having lost 8.2%, or 8.32% over the last 24 hours. My goodness me. So that's, well, scenario, you lucky sod. You um, got included today, even though you are just outside the top 20, because I don't usually go past the top 20 when I do the market roundup. Oh my goodness, I've gabbled on about that for seven minutes. I've got to move on. So looking at the Bitcoin price chart, courtesy of BitcoinWisdom.com, still pre sitting pretty calm in the markets right now. A Bitcoin token, according to Bitstamp, is worth $574.20. Still sat in that range I keep talking about, 600 at the top, 540 at the bottom, maybe 550 at the bottom. So it's a $50 range there. Nice and steady. So is the volume is nice and steady. And, uh, well, uh, barring any... any shocks or or big news i'm sure it will remain that way but it's only a matter of time before some big announcement comes out you know uh, what have i been following you know kim.com is um pending is is moving to the launch of bitcash in january i think it is max kaiser was tweeting about this yesterday and i quite looking forward to this because i think kim.com is a very clever guy he's obviously um uh, a big innovator and so he's going to be putting all of his experience with his mega companies, his mega upload and all that expertise he's got and encryption and cloud storage, and then putting the Bitcoin blockchain into it as well. So if you want to know more about that, just Google Bitcash and, and follow Kim.com on tw Twitter and you'll see what's coming. So it's going to be good for Bitcoin. And when that launches, I'm pretty sure that's going to boost the price of a Bitcoin. So that's not investment advice as always, but I'm definitely... Uh, Looking forward to my Bitcoin holdings going up in value when Bitcash launches. All right, guys, stay tuned for the second half of the Cryptoverse, where a whole lot more is coming your way. Hi there, guys, and welcome back to the Cryptoverse. My name's Chris Coney. Now time to send to the news, courtesy of Bitcoin.com. And today we have an article entitled, Is Facebook About to Get MySpaced by Next, Next Generation Social Media? This is an article by Jamie Redman, and it was posted yesterday, August the 26th. So let's get into it, shall we? I mentioned Steam and Scenario, and I think that they're going to feature in this article. As always, if you're a new listener, just FYI, I don't read these articles ahead of time um, because I want to give you my off-the-top-of-the-head comments and commentary uh, genuinely rather than preparing what I'm going to say. I think that's most valuable. So it says, Social media is a major component of the internet and has already transformed how humans communicate and interact. Looking to, take advantage, uh, looking to take things to the next level, a few projects are trying to combine social media with the blockchain. Well, they're not trying to. Steam it actually is a social network that's built on the blockchain, so it's already been accomplished. So Steamit, blockchain-based social media platform Steamit, has gained quite a, few, uh, quite a following in the past few months. The project was built by Dan Larimer, the founder of BitShares using Graphene Architecture. The company is also led by Ned Scott, 
who is a technical analyst with a financial background, sorry, a background in financial data. He's an analyst. And a great compliment to Dan Larimer, if you ask me. So Steemit launched in March of 2016 with moderate enthusiasm from the community and a small following. It has since been a hot topic in cryptocurrency circles and on social media. During the summer, Steemit attracted a lot of artists, writers and vloggers to the, to the platform, specifically because it pays people for sharing content. People have been paid thousands of dollars per post in some instances, with the most popular articles getting or netting close to $15,000. And that's not true either. I think the best post ever in terms of earnings was $44,000. It was from, uh, don't quote me on that. It was from one of the developers, I think, in the BitShares community who already had done a lot for the community. So um, is it Xerox or Fav or someone like that? I can't remember. But anyway, the platform, which combines the concepts of Facebook, WordPress, and Reddit, operates on the Steam blockchain and uses three types of tokens, uh, crypto tokens. So the Steam power, which gives users the ability to throw their weight around on the platform. The more power you have, the more significant your vote will be when you upvote a post or even a comment. Comments have been seen to gain upwards of 20 to $40, so all interaction is rewarded. In fact, a couple of days ago, I saw Trace Mayer make a comment, and he got now on $100 just for making a comment, which was one paragraph. But that's, the, that's how it works. If the community thinks that was a damn fine comment, then $100 it is. So then the second token is Steam, and Steam is a token that powers two smart contract protocols similar to Ether's gas, and it's tradable on cryptocurrency markets. So Dan Larimer calls this liquid steam because you can instantly buy and sell it. So the token is supported on exchanges like, like Bitrex or Polodex, Polo, Poloniex. There's a debate how you, how, how you pr pronounce that. Poloniex, I think it is. However, holders also have the option to use their coins to boost their steam power. Well, well, that should have been in a different order. So they should, the article for sure really mentioned steam first because that's the actual native token to the Steam blockchain. Then you could take Steam and power it up, as it's known, and then you lock it away and it becomes Steam Power. And that, that then increases your voting power, hence the name Steam Power. Then you can also turn your Steam into Steam Dollars. And Steam Dollars are designed to be pegged at one US dollar and be equivalent of one dollar's worth of Steam for conversion over the platform. On cryptocurrency exchanges, SBDs, or Steam-backed dollars, can be seen trading for a dollar or less depending on the market value. So in essence, it makes more sense to use the system's seven-day conversion over a third-party exchange, though lots of people cash out their content earnings elsewhere. Yes, so you can do that. You can um, sell your Steam-backed dollars for Steam and then power them up, or you can take your Steam-backed dollars and put them on Poloniex and then turn them into Bitcoin or whatever else. So Steam adds new features. Steamit developers have just announced the additional, additional, the addition of highly requested features to the site. The service will enhance the social media experience by adding private messaging, notifications, and follow buttons. The team believes implementing these features will facilitate interaction between community members and attract new people currently using Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Well, how's that going to work? I mean, how's how's instant messaging going to work? I I would think that the core feature set of Steam should be kept quite tight. That's one of the things that Andreas Antonopoulos says about Bitcoin is that the instruction set itself has been kept quite tight. And then all people do is put that instruction set together in creative ways to, cre to create, you know, the various tools that that are based on Bitcoin. And he said that's why he put the leaf cutter ant on the front of his book, Mastering Bitcoin. Because on their own, a leaf cutter ant only has you know very small brain, only has a limited intelligence, and only exhibits certain very basic behaviors in isolation. But you put like millions of ants together and they form a colony and they start exhibiting quite complex behaviors like our hive consciousness, right? Um and that's that's the parallels with Bitcoin. 
So Steemit CEO Ned Scott explains as follows, quote, Enhancing the diversity of our application-specific blockchain is a natural progression for Steemit. Private messaging is perfectly suited for decentralized systems and will empower users in a similar way to how direct messages empower users on Twitter. The follow feature will enable community members to receive notifications as soon as their favorite authors post. And the notifications will work just like Facebook, in that users will be alerted immediately upon a new post or upvote from their favorite contributors. These features are the pillars of current social media giants, and we look forward to integrating them into Steemit over the coming weeks. Yeah, that would be quite good, wouldn't it? You know, on Facebook, you have that little globe icon. And then whenever some sort of activity happens, you get the little white number one in the red circle. And then you can see all the notifications. That'd be cool. Especially if someone you were following that you respected, like, um, uh, say, Trace Mayer, if you wanted to know whenever he upvoted something. Yeah, so that's like, Trace Mayer says this is good content. And you might go, oh, what does Trace Mayer think is good content? You know? So rather than him posting it, you could uh, appoint him as your official curator, as it were, or a number of people as your official curators. So big names and skepticism. Steemit's popularity has attracted quite a few well-known people to share content on the platform, including personalities like Trace Mayer, Larkin Rose, Charlie Schrem, Roger Veer, Tatiana Morris, and Rick Falkvinge. Some of these famous users regularly take in four figures for introducing themselves, writing stories and posting videos and podcast content. Well, that's exactly what happened to Trace Mayer when I contacted him and said, do you want to do a, a chat about Steemit? He posted that episode of the, uh, well, it was kind of a joint Bitcoin knowledge, which is his podcast and the Cryptoverse, and he made like $3,000. So I was like, woo, go Trace. However, there have been some naysayers who believe the project is a scam or resembles somewhat of a Ponzi. Brave new coin contributor and Bitcoin technical analyst Tone Vase says Steemit appears to be a Ponzi scheme. Vase highlighted many points on why he believes the platform is set up like a pyramid scam. He even debated the issue on the Dollar Vigilantes podcast, Anacast. Many people are waiting to see if the project can continue to hold its own, keeping up its significantly large payouts and ultimately survive as a social media platform with perks. So a pyramid scheme then, um, don't you have to put money in to in order to um, be scammed? So if you put time in and then it doesn't actually end up getting you any money, is that a scam? Or do you have to put money in uh, in order to be scammed? Because with Steamer, you don't have to actually put any money in. In fact, you get paid $4 of Steam for signing up. So that is um, in, unfounded from the get-go. So competition is coming. Soon, Steemit won't be the only blockchain-based social media platform on the market. Tel Aviv-based Scenario, founded by Dor Conforti and Greg Meredith, also aims to create a decentralized social media protocol. The team has recently announced a prototype of the Scenario platform, which is in alpha phase and works on top of the software's distributed stack. With Scenario's blockchain-based social network, the protocol puts content creators in charge of the media they produce, just like Steemit. Users control their personal information and produce content that can be monetized within the Scenario community. Unlike Twitter or Facebook, Scenario's application doesn't store data on its users, oh, sorry, on its users and cannot sell the information to third parties. Instead, the platform works through transactions on the Scenario blockchain and is only available to network participants. Well, you see, the thing is, guys, like, this is a question I haven't yet sort of answered for Steemit yet. How the hell does the company make money? I mean, I don't think they are making any money right now, not directly from Steemit anyway. I know that Dan Larimer's company, which is called, um, uh, what's it called? Cryptonomics. They they provide blockchain consultancy and development services to companies. That's fine. They're selling their services. They're getting paid for it. All good. The question is, though, I think that that business is funding Steemit because they've got steemit.com website, the servers. Uh, of course, the <clears throat> the blockchain itself is distributed, so they don't have to pay for that as such. But they still have to pay for uh, the developers to keep maintaining and updating it and also the hosting for steemit.com. It's like, so that's losing money. So how, how the hell does um, the company behind Steemit actually make money? I don't really know. You, you could say by selling Steam, but that's, you know, if they have this sole power to issue it, 
I don't think they can issue it arbitrarily though. I think the issuance is based on is in code. Um, so maybe that, like like most social networks, the first goal is to build a uh, build the user base and then they'll work out a business model later on. So there we go. All right, just finish this off. This is the scenario social media network will operate without any central server and it will compensate its user base for their content and shared computational power. The team also says that the project adheres to principles of the attention economy that in essence rewards network users for cre creation and curation. The platform includes text posting, image posting, content labeling, tagging posts and hashtags, decentralized uh, searching and content amplification. Users will also be able to promote content by charging, charging, or charging with the scenario blockchain's native currency AMP. Uh, AMP as in electrical AMP, I guess. Users viewing content loaded with AMP will be compensated and encouraging people to interact with amplified content. During last week's developer and community hangout, the Scenario team talked about its recent joint venture with WeWowWe.com. The developer's news update states, quote, the WeWowWe.com project now has API functionality and is able to work with outside networks so that users can now be compensated automatically with AMPs for their contributions to the social network. Also, the components of the Scenario ecosystem are starting to cover, are starting to coverage and reveal or converge and reveal a detailed picture of its capability. Final paragraph, guys. Will centralized social media fall by the wayside? Platforms like Twitter and Facebook are still the prominent social media platforms that everyone uses. The mechanics of these websites are very much centralized as third parties benefit from the user's content, targeting ads, and personal information. Meanwhile, other social media services like D Diaspora and TSU uh, and others have, haven't been able to grasp widespread attention on par with the reception received by Steemit. Given the rise in popularity of Steemit, the next generation of social media will make it easier to monetize content, resist censorship, and provide users with a true peer-to-peer -peer experience. It may be a few years until Facebook loses its supremacy the way that MySpace did, but the trends, trend towards decentralization and better security will ensure that users do not only retain their privacy, but also share in the spoils of the online community. Yes, indeed. So think about that. Imagine if, so you know like the US dollar is backed by the faith in or faith and confidence in the US government, right? Imagine if Facebook issued a Facebook dollar. Imagine that, right? Imagine that. And imagine if the currency, the Facebook dollar, was actually represented a stake in Facebook, the company. Wow, now that would be something, wouldn't it? Because the a currency has to be backed by something. Uh, usually it's utility, and that's kind of what um, the Steam dollar is backed by. It's backed by the utility on the Steemit network, and also the fact that you can power it up and then have a greater ability to gain people's attention. So that's where the value is derived from. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this scenario. It's uh, going to be a good one. So that's going to do it for today's edition of the Cryptoverse with me, Chris Coney. Please go to the podcast page on cryptoversity.com, subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or Steemit. Contribute to the Cryptoverse by tipping us in Bitcoin or clicking through to Steemit and voting for this episode. Make sure you check out the main site, cryptoversity.com, the online school where you set the price to turn, to, to turn about, to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains. I've been Chris Coney. I will see you tomorrow for tomorrow's episode of the Cryptoverse. And until then, it's bye for now.